In this video, we'll review some of the various ways of solving logarithmic equations. The first approach we're going to use is rewriting logarithmic equations as exponential equations. To begin, log base 3 of 2x equals 4 can be rewritten. I can rewrite this problem as 3 to the fourth power equals 2x. This is going to be a pretty quick equation to solve. 3 to the fourth power is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 81. Now if we just divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 40 and 1 half, or 81 halves. Use the same approach to solve the next two problems. Rewrite each of the logarithmic equations as an exponential and solve the exponential equation. I would like for you to pause the video, work them out, and then resume the video when you're ready to check your answers. I'll give you a second. Hopefully you've had a chance to work these problems out. On the first one, I'm going to rewrite it as 5 to the third power equals the 2x minus 7. 5 to the third power is 125. Add 7 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 2. I get x equals 66. For the next one, x is in a different position. It's in the base. So when I rewrite this one as an exponential, I'm going to get x to the second power, or x squared, equals 64. To solve this one, we need to undo that squaring. The inverse of squaring is square rooting, so I'll take the square root of both sides. Now typically when you take the square root of a square, you get two answers. Normally I'd say it's plus or minus 8. However, the base of a log can never be negative. So in this case, I know I can't have x equals negative 8 as a valid answer, because that would make the base of the logarithm, the logarithm a negative. Because the base of the log can never be negative, we know that the answer can only be the x equals 8, not x equals negative 8. Now let's take a look at another type of example. In these ones, you have an equation where log equals log. If you have an equation where the logs are equal and they have the same base, I'm going to use this approach. If log base b of w equals log base b of z, that is, if you have two logs with the same base that are equal, the only way this is possible is if the arguments, in this case w and z, are also equal. So if you have the logs with the same base that are equal, the arguments are equal. And I'm going to apply that to the first problem. Here we have two logs with base 3 that are equal. If log base 3 of x, the quantity x plus 4 equals log base 3 of 14 are equal, then the only way this is possible is if the arguments x plus 4 and 14 are also equal. And there's my new equation, which is going to be very quick to solve. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I get the answer x equals 10, and the problem's done. Use the same approach, and I want you to try solving the next problem. All right, hopefully you had a chance to work this one. I have log base 7 of the quantity 4x minus 8 equals log base 7 of the quantity x plus 1. I have a problem with logs with the same base that are equal. If this is true, the only way it's possible is if the arguments, the 4x minus 8, and the x plus 1 are also equal. If we subtract x from both sides, add 8 to both sides, and then divide by 3, we get the answer x is 3. Now these look like pretty quick problems. The only thing you have to watch out for on these is to make sure you don't have an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is an answer that looks good, but if you substitute it back into the problem, you develop an issue. The, law, the argument rather, of a log can never be a negative. The arguments must always be positive. So if you get an answer that substitutes back in and gives you a negative argument, then the problem is no good. It's not a valid solution. Again, the argument of a logarithm must always be greater than zero. So let's look at a couple of examples and see when this happens. If I have this problem, and this one is log base 2 of the quantity 16 minus 3x equals log base 2 of negative x, I have a pair of logs that are equal, and they have the same base. The only chance that this is going to be possible is if the arguments themselves are also equal. So in this case, 16 minus 3x has to equal the negative x. If we solve this, we're going to add 3 to both, 3x to both sides. If I add 3x to both sides, I get 16 equals 2x. If I then divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 8. And that looks like a good answer, but I need to check it. If I substitute this into x on both sides of the equation, I get log base 2 of the quantity 16 minus 3 times 8 equals log base 2 of negative 8. And I can already see a problem here. On the right, I've got a negative argument. And actually, if I clean up the left-hand side, I get 16 minus 3 times 8, which is 16 minus 24, which is also negative 8. Even though the arguments are equal, this is a problem. You cannot have the argument of a log be negative. So because our argument ends up being a negative answer, x equals negative 8 is extraneous. 
meaning it's not an answer, which means this problem has no solution. Well, let's take our attention to the next one. Here we have log base 5 of the quantity x squared minus x equals log base 5 of 12. We have logs with the same base that are equal. The only way this is possible is if the arguments themselves are also equal. Now because this one has an x squared, we need to get the other side equal to 0. We can do that by subtracting 12 from both sides. And we get x squared minus x minus 12. To solve this problem, I got a couple approaches. I could use completing the square, I could use quadratic formula, or I could try factoring it. Because this one's a 1x one squared, I'm going to try factoring it. And if I try to find numbers that multiply to be negative 12 but add to be negative 1, I can find them. It's negative 4 and 3. So this tells me x squared minus x minus 12 is equivalent to the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 3, which now equals 0. Using the zero product property, I can split it and set each of these factors equal to 0, which means x minus 4 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. Solving both equations, I add 4 to the, uh, both sides of the first one, and I get x equals 4. Or I subtract 3 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 3. Now these answers do need to be checked. It's possible that one or both of these are extraneous, or none of them. If we substitute 4 back into the original problem, we're going to put it everywhere there's an x. So we get log base 4 of the quantity, 4 squared minus 4, equals log base 5 of 12. Well, 4 squared is 16, and 16 minus 4 is 12. I get arguments that are positive on both sides, which means x equals 4 is a valid solution. Now let's check that negative 3 piece. If I substitute in the negative 3, I get log base 5 of the quantity, negative 3 squared, minus the negative 3. Well, the quantity negative 3 squared is 9, and the negative negative 3 becomes plus 3. I get log base 5 of the quantity 9 plus 3, or log base 5 of 12. This one also has both arguments equal, which means x equals negative 3 is also a valid argument, or a valid answer. So both of these are solutions. Please don't make the mistake of seeing that just because x is negative, that it's not an answer. You have to check it in the actual equation and make sure that it gives you a positive argument. If it does, then it's a solution. Now this next one I've got here, it looks pretty simple. I've just got 4 to the 2x equals 10. And the way I'm going to do this, it's an exponential equation, so I want to get a same base. So can I write an equation that uses the same base for 4 to the 2x equals 10? And the problem is, no. I can't make something using both 4 and 10 with the same base. So this is kind of a problem. So the question becomes, how do we do it? And there is a way to do it, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply our logs. If we take the log of both sides, I get this. The log of the quantity 4 to the 2x equals log of 10. To solve this problem out, I'm going to uh, re uh, rewrite, rewrite the exponent. I'm going to use the log of a uh, power rule to rewrite this exponent. If I use the log of a power rule, I can take the exponent, that 2x, and bring it in front of the log, and say this is really 2x times the log of 4 equals the log of 10. Now my goal is to get x by itself, which means I need to move that log that's on the same side as x. Now that the x is outside of the log, I can divide both sides by log of 4 and get an answer that says 2x equals log of 10 over log of 4. Now I've almost got x by itself. The only thing I need to do is undo the 2 times x. Opposite of multiplying would be to divide. So if I divide both sides by 2, I'll have a 2 on the bottom. So this is log of 10 divided by 2 logs of 4. Now at this point, I'm going to use a calculator to find the answer. The log button is one of the calculators, or one of the calculator's buttons. This is, for most of you, the only button that you actually have for logs, and it's log base 10. So in this problem, what I'll do is type in log of 10, hit enter, divided by 2, enter, and divide by log 4, enter. You can also go log of 10 divided by the parentheses, or quantity, to log 4, and hit enter. The only thing you have to watch out for if you're going to do it on the calculator is when you go log of 10, close the parentheses, then divide by 2 log 4, enter. And if you do that, you're going to get a decimal, and this decimal is going to be about 0 0.8305. And we can check this answer. If you want to see if you actually got the answer right, substitute it back in. If you take your calculator and go 4, raised to the parentheses 2 times 0 0.8305, you'll see that you actually get this for the answer. It'll come out to be 10, or something very, very close to it. Now let's take a look at a couple more problems that are like this. I'm going to set up a couple more exponential problems that you can't find the base conveniently. 
in which case we'll use log to solve for it. So what I'd like for you to do is take these two problems, I want you to take the log of bo uh, both sides, and I want you to solve it like we just did the last one. Pause the video, try it, and then resume the video when you're ready. I'll give you a minute. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to work these. Now, I'm not going to solve this like I've done in the past because I can't make 13 using a base of 2 conveniently. So instead, I'll take the log of both sides. I get log of 2x equals log of 13. I'm going to use the log of a power rule to bring the exponent out and say it's x log of 2 equals log of 13. To get x by itself, I'll divide both sides by log of 2, and I get log x equals log of 13 divided by the log of 2. Take my calculator, type it in, go log of 13, close the parentheses, divided by log of 2, and I get that it's about 3.7004. Now, if you're getting an answer that's not this, my guess is that you didn't close the parentheses on log of 13. You've got to be careful about the order of operations on the calculator. Either go log of 13, enter, divided by log of 2, enter, or go log of 13, close the parentheses, then divide by log of 2, enter. Make sure you know how to get this. If you can't, make sure you ask your teacher how to do it. For the next problem, I can't get 22 using a base of 5, so instead, I'm going to take the log of both sides. Here the exponent is the x plus 3, so I can bring that to the front and say it's the quantity x plus 3 times log of 5 equals log of 22. To get the x plus 3 by itself, I'll divide both sides by log of 5, and then the last step is just subtract 3. It's log of 22 divided by log of 5, and then minus 3. And then using my calculator, that's where I got the x is about negative 1.0794. To type that on the calculator, I would go log of 22, close the parentheses, divided by log of 5, hit enter, and then subtract 3. Another way to do it would be to go log of 22, enter, divided by log of 5, enter, and then minus 3. That last way is probably a little bit more uh, foolproof where you can't make a mistake, and that's probably the way I would do it. All right. I hope these problems helped you to understand the logs. If there's something you're still missing, rewind the video and look at it. And thank you for watching.